Hey guys, Jason. And today I want to talk about why CPU coins are bad. And you might say, whoa, Jason, why are CPU coins bad? They're supposed to be a better, fair way to mine and to really evenly disperse coins to the average user. Well, in theory, yes, they're supposed to be. But in practice, not really. So let me break it down and explain why. So the whole idea behind CPU coins are that they utilize your CPU. And you can't really, um, you know, create CPU mining farms. So let me explain why. So in the background, you see I have mining computers. They have a CPU, a GPU, they have a PSU, they have a motherboard, they have fans. So you might say, well, Jason, you know, somebody could go out and buy, you know, a setup and have six GPUs per computer, and that's why, you know, GPU mining coins or ASIC-capable mining coins are a bad thing because they allow centralization um, when really cryptocurrencies is about decentralization, you know, that every single person contributes to the network. And I agree, that's why I mine. One of the reasons I mine more than anything, I, again, the profits are nice, but the one reason I mine is so that I can be part of the network. I can help, you know, help the decentralization, right? Be a part of the community. Well, CPU coins are supposed to be like that. And the idea behind it is very simple. Everyone has a CPU in their computer. Why not use that extra space or that extra memory and run some algorithm, make some coins? Well, that sounds like a great idea. The problem is there are so many other um, ways to mine CPU coins that most people, when they hear the idea of a CPU coin, don't realize. First of all, um, a lot of people in the CPU mining community talk about um, going out and you can, you know, get a supercomputer. You can, or I'm talking about renting a supercomputer or getting a virtual private server. So, you know, you, for instance, you can get so much um, hosting power, or, you know, virtual private server power on Amazon for a very cheap price. And so a lot of people use those servers to, to mine their coins and not their average computer so they don't tie their CPU down, which is a pretty good idea. Um, kind of then depletes the idea of every single person mining on their own, right? So these people are using these supercomputers. They're paying money, which you might say is an advantage. The problem is the people that have money to spend to mine these coins um, usually have a little bit of extra money or they made mine money in other mining adventures. And so it's become centralized, right? But that's not the only thing. Another thing that we've run into, and this was a big thing back with Bitcoin in 2011-2012, the IRA number, and even a little bit into 2013, is botnets. And if you don't know what a botnet is, it's essentially a hacker gets a whole bunch of computers together, and he usually uses those computers for a DDoS attack. They all send packets of information to a source, and with the attempt to try to shut that source down. But in this case, the hacker um, takes control of the computers, and uses those computers' CPUs to mine a coin, and then of course, the profits go back to the hacker, and so they're basically stealing electricity from you, they're stealing computer power, and they're also hacking into your system, which is wrong. Now, with, you know, nowadays with Bitcoin, there's so much mining power that for, there's no really um, incentive, right? You might say, well, what kind of incentive is there? Well, it's an economic incentive. Um, it's become that one little miner, and I don't have any Bitcoin miners back here, but a, one little Bitcoin miner that's like $100, would be the equivalent of like a million computers with their CPUs. So it's kind of come to the point where it's like, it's not worth it to hack into computers and, you know, take control of their CPUs and utilize that for mining CPU coins or any other coin like it is. And the same thing is true for script coins now. So the only thing that it's still useful for is CPU coins. So what we run into is CPU coins are being abused by botnets because they only run CPU and everybody has a CPU in their computer and they're being abused by servers and people that have, you know, virtual private servers out in the, in the field. So while, yes, you know, you might say, well, I have four computers in my house, I can mine, you know, um, for instance, PrimeCoin. You could mine PrimeCoin with your, with your computers, right? And, you know, you could. Um, but a lot of these CPU coins, they pride themselves on saying, well, we're ASIC resistant, we're GPU resistant. In reality, they might be, but they're not resistant to botnets, they're not resistant to being uh, mined by servers or supercomputers. So the same disadvantages that say Bitcoin and um, Litecoin and you know, so script versus ASIC have with the you know fundamental problem of oh wait centralization is happening because there's money to be made is happening with CPU coins. And so I kind of want to talk about that because it's kind of frustrated me. I've had so many people say well Jason why don't you just look into CPU coins. And I'm trying to explain to people on email, but I've gotten so many emails asking me about CPU coins. I've read in the forums about people saying, oh, well, these are resistant. They're not really resistant. They're, they're resistant to 
GPU, they're resistant to ASIC boards, but they're not resistant to botnets, they're not resistant to server-side, you know, mining. So, you know, that does have that disadvantage. Now, in that same regard, I, w I do want to note, I, I did mention PrimeCoin here recently, a, a, couple minutes, a couple seconds ago in my video. PrimeCoin is one of the exceptions. And you might say, well, why is it an exception? The reason it's an exception is its goal, um, it was developed by a guy who also developed PeerCoin, which is a phenomenal coin in my personal opinion. And PrimeCoin, its goal is finding higher prime numbers. So you're kind of, if you're doing it, you're, you know, yeah, PrimeCoin's worth money, and yeah, the coins that you make are worth money, but the whole goal of PrimeCoin is to advance our scientific knowledge of PrimeCoin, or not PrimeCoins, Prime Numbers. And, you know, I think that's pretty interesting. So, you know, if you support scientific adventure or scientific discovery, then PrimeCoin's an example of a CPU mining, CPU mining only coin that does have an advantage of, you know, providing real life scientific research and data. So, that's kind of my video, guys. Again, I just want to talk about CPU coins because I heard so many people, you know, trying to tell me, Jason, they're resistant to all these things. They're not resistant. You know, you, you give somebody something that's resistant to one thing, they'll find something else that's not resistant to. That's just the way that cards are usually played. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great night.